So homeostasis, you guys started this yesterday with the web quest, but exactly what is homeostasis? Who remembers from the web quest? Maintaining a constant internal. perfect internal environment, okay? So it's the maintenance of a constant internal environment in response to changes in either the external environment, like what's going on around you, or your internal environment. Let's say you get sick or something, then your body has to still maintain homeostasis to make sure that everything is going correctly. All right, so how is homeostasis achieved? So to maintain cells, tissues, and entire organisms within their biological tolerance limits, there are several different mechanisms that have evolved that we're gonna talk about, okay? Biological tolerance limits means within your ability to live, okay? If we just fly you to the moon and kick you out of the spaceship that is outside of your biological tolerance limit, homeostasis will stop and you will die, die. perfect. All right. Oh. So the first part is structural, okay? Homeostasis is partly achieved just through the structures that you are built with, okay? So the animal or plant has particular physical features which help its survival in an otherwise hostile environment. For example, polar bears, where do they live? In the Arctic, right? It is cold there. So polar bears tend to have a lot of what to keep them warm? Fur. Fur and fat. They're fat and furry, which kind of makes them cute. But that allows them to survive in what would otherwise be a hostile environment, right? The Arctic is considered a hostile environment. Functional, okay? So the metabolism of the animal or plant is able to adjust to changes in conditions as they are detected. For example, what do bears do in the winter? Hibernate, right? Are you gonna die if you don't eat breakfast and you wait until lunch to eat? You might feel like it sometimes, but you won't, okay? Because your metabolism's going to adjust to the fact that you did not eat food. There's also behavioral. So the actions and interactions of the individual, either alone or with others, help it survive in its particular environment. If I turn the air conditioner on so it's like really cold in here, what are you most likely going to put on? A jacket. A jacket, okay? So that's a behavioral thing that you would do in order to warm yourself up. If it got to like minus 10 degrees in here, and your jacket wasn't enough to stay warm, what do people tend to do? <coughs> group hug, huddle for warmth, okay? That's a group interaction for people to stand next to each other to warm up, okay? So maintaining homeostasis through behavior changes, where do birds go when it gets too cold? South, okay? So some examples of homeostasis that we talked about, obviously the bears hibernate. This cow is resting in the shade so he doesn't overheat. Um, things in the Arctic have fur. You can see this chameleon is almost invisible on the second tree. So he changes color. Feedback mechanisms. This is what your homeostasis project is really going to be based on, is identifying feedback mechanisms in three different body systems while you're talking about whatever stress or trauma is in your scenario, okay? So a feedback mechanism is the general mechanism of nervous or hormonal regulation in animals. Are you nervous and hormonal? Probably, because you're in high school. <laughs> But nervous means you have a nervous system, right? We have a brain, we have a spinal cord, 
all of that, and hormonal meaning that we have an endocrine system that controls most of our stuff. So negative feedback is when the response diminishes the original stimulus, okay? So feedback loops, there are some specific vocab terms that you guys need to know just so you can identify the different parts of the feedback loops. Okay, so the first one is the stimulus, the change from an ideal or resting condition. <coughs> For example, it starts to get cold in the classroom. The receptor are the cells or tissues which detect the change due to the stimulus, okay? How do you know it's cold in the classroom? Your arms and face and everything feel cold, right? Your skin feels cold. Once your skin gets cold, it's going to send that message, right? Hey, it's getting cold in here. So the relay is the transmission of the message via nerves or hormones or both to the effector. All right, the effector is the cell or tissue, usually a gland or muscle, which causes the response to happen. So your brain says, it's cold, put on a jacket. So the response is, you put on the jacket. <laughs> okay, so it's an action. It's something that would not have occurred in the absence of the stimulus. If you were not cold, you would not put on your jacket. And last but not least is the feedback, or the consequence of the response on the stimulus. Once your jacket's on, you are not cold anymore, so that would be a negative feedback loop. Okay, so here's an example of a negative feedback loop, and really what it's trying to show you is that the response eliminates the change or stimulus and returns it back to normal, okay? Whole idea of negative feedback is to get you back to your baseline. Positive feedback, however, um, strengthens the stimulus. Positive feedback you usually see um, more rarely, and an example of positive feedback would be childbirth. The contractions get stronger, the baby pushes harder on the cervix, which causes stronger contractions, and it keeps going and going and going until the baby finally just pops out, just like that, just so nice and easy. <laughs> Okay, so negative feedback is most common in biological systems. Most common in biological systems. Another example of negative feedback is the thermostat in your house, okay? If it gets too cold, what turns on? Not all at once, no. The heater, excellent, okay? And that'll, if it's too cold, your heater could turn on. That'll warm it up. Once it gets to a certain temperature, it'll stop, right? If it gets too hot, what turns on? The air conditioner, okay? And once it gets to a certain temperature, usually like 70 or whatever, then it'll turn off, right? The whole idea is to keep the internal temperature in your house about the same. So other examples of negative feedback, okay? So blood glucose concentrations. Let's say for lunch, you're like, I'm not gonna have a chicken wrap. I'm gonna have four Snickers bars because that sounds like a great idea. I'm gonna feel awesome, okay? So you eat a super sugary meal, which is the stimulus and the blood glucose levels, the sugar levels in your blood go way up, right? 
Now, if your sugar levels just stayed that high in your blood, you could die. Okay, that's why diabetes is such a serious disease, because they don't have a way to get it out of their bloodstream, so they can die from a sugar overdose. In a person that doesn't have diabetes, the hormone insulin is released, and it takes all the glucose out of the blood and pushes it into the cells. And it's like, hey, you need to turn this, you need to burn it, turn it into fat, do something with it, okay? Because it can't just stay in the bloodstream or we're gonna go in a coma. So insulin is released, it speeds up the transport of glucose out of the blood and into the tissues. So the blue, blood, blue, so the blood glucose concentrations decrease because now it's in the cells. And since it's decreasing, that's an example of negative feedback, right? It was too high, your body took care of it, now it's at the right level again. Another example of negative feedback, you need me to go back? Okay. Okay, so another example of negative feedback, you go to PE, and they're like, we're doing the mile today. You're like, yes, I love running the mile. I'm going to run it as fast as I possibly can. Okay? Exercise is going to create metabolic heat, okay, which raises the body temperature. What happens when you start running? You start to sweat. Okay? So your cooling mechanism is vasodilation, which means the blood goes closer to your, the surface of your skin, okay? and you begin to sweat. As the sweat evaporates, what happens to you? Do you get hotter or colder? If it's negative feedback, what should you, your body temperature should what? Good, it should cool off, okay? Okay, positive feedback is much less common, okay? Which kind of makes sense because if you're throwing yourself off of homeostasis, then you generally don't want to make the, that situation worse, right? It could be a threat to your health. If you keep dropping your body temperature and dropping and dropping and dropping, you'll eventually just freeze to death. But sometimes you do need positive feedback. For example, Go back. For example, breastfeeding, okay, or lactation. A baby begins to suck on her mother's nipple. Few milk, few drops of milk are released. Baby drinks more because it's hungry. Once the baby stops, then the milk stops. Okay. Just like in the puppy picture, or in the people picture. What's kind of gross is that this is also true of cows. People think cows just like maybe make milk that's like just because that's what they do. No, it's because they had a calf and they're going to feed the calf, but we just keep using industrial things to suck the milk right out. That's true. And humans are one of the few species that actually drink the breast milk of another species. Even though we're used to cow's milk, right? It's no different really to drink goat's milk or, I mean, the idea of drinking cat milk sounds pretty nasty. <laughs> Come here, kitty. I need some cereal. Come here. <laughs> That'd be nasty. Right? Could you imagine milking your dog and being like, okay, breakfast is served. <laughs> Freaking nasty. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Another example. I'll go back. Another example is a, a ripening apple releases the volatile plant hormone ethylene. Okay, so as fruit and vegetables ripen, they release a gas called ethylene. And guess what that does? It causes all the fruit around them to ripen and release their own ethylene which makes everything start to ripen, 
even faster. That's where the saying a bad apple ruins the bunch, one bad apple ruins the bunch, is because if you have a rotten apple, it's releasing so much ethylene that the rest of your apples will go bad faster than if you took that bad apple out of the bunch. So it doesn't just apl apply to that annoying kid in your fourth period. Know what I mean? Additionally, if you have avocados, avocados don't ripen until they're picked. So sometimes you get them and they're like not ready to eat at all. If you put them in a sealed container with a piece of fruit that is ripe, thank you, then it will ripen faster. And instead of taking maybe a week, it'll take like a day or two, which is kind of cool. Also, if you've ever been to the grocery store and the like plastic bags that you put the produce in, if it's green, those are specifically designed to absorb ethylene gas. So if you keep all your fruits and veggies in those different green like saran wrappy bags, then they won't make the other ones ripen. It'll keep them all separate. Fascinating grocery store science today, huh, guys? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> All right, so overall, homeostasis is making sure that you have stable operating conditions in your internal environment, right? That you keep living. That's the whole point of homeostasis, is that you keep living. If homeostasis stops, then you die, okay? And it's really this stimulus and um, response and the organism that are all three interacting in order to make sure that everyone survives, okay? So if you take a few minutes, um, there are some questions that you can answer from your notes that are on the back of your lecture notes. So go ahead and answer those. And then if you need to, you can continue working on your web quest. <laughs>